Well, we have been using it from day one, and I think probably people will notice first off, some kids choose to use their finger, or some of them use the pointer, and that just came with learning each kid and who likes to use a smart board. Some people don't like, you know, the tactile, but you can use a pointer or any, anything if the kids feel like they're, it doesn't respond well to their finger. Let's count like a three, four, five. Honestly, it saves me so much time because I would otherwise have to be writing all of those examples on the board. And so suddenly you create them and then there they are. And then you just kind of tweak them from year to year to kind of meet the needs of your class. But um, I can literally prepare lessons and either record on the slide or record the lesson as a whole. And all the substitute has to do is play it as a movie. They, they love it because you know they're not afraid to use the wrong vocabulary or show them the wrong way because it's literally the way that, that I would do it myself because I did do it myself. So I record the lessons like, um, you know, anytime I have more than you know, one or two kids out like this morning would be a good time to do that. And then during PE, we'll go and we'll go watch them. And so they, they've not missed out on anything. M but mostly what I found to be the most effective is mix it up. You don't always want to have activities like I had this morning where they get up and do, you know, move it and, and everything like that. You have to, sometimes we do magic eraser and I mean, just different things. Before I had the smart board, I could, you know, teach and try to address all modes, but this one meets it perfectly. It's visual, it's tactile kinesthetic, they can get up and they can move and uh, there's honestly no way that I could meet all of those needs as successfully just using the whiteboard. So yes, yes, and honestly that is another reason that I recommend using the smart board. I prepare all of my lessons in advance, but that doesn't mean it's done. Okay, I have to go back. The lessons are there, but each group of kids is different. And so, you know, the weekend before, I go through and I say, okay, well, this student probably needs more of this, and this student needs more of that, or, you know, they're successfully meeting this need, so we'll focus more in another area. So, yeah, just because the lessons are created does not mean you are done by any means. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'll have a kid that will, you know, kind of freeze up when they get up there. And so we do what I call like phone a friend so that they don't feel stuck up there and they can call a buddy up to come and help them. Because for some reason, sometimes certain children in front of the smart board, if they don't know the answer, they'll, you know, they'll just kind of freeze up. So you need to have some practices in place where, you know, they can help themselves. Today we're going to do non-standard units, which I think the kids will enjoy. Um, but as far as like myself teaching math on the smart board versus the whiteboard, oh my goodness, it's, it's amazing. And I can literally pull up their workbook page and we can do all of the examples together and they can mark them, you know, it, it's just an invaluable tool. I would just start the way I did, playing with it, you know, just, I mean, the gallery holds tons of things. Um, there's, uh, a resource online where you can find lots of lessons already created um, so if you can find those and then make, adapt them to meet your needs then you don't have to reinvent the wheel yourself um, and then you know once you get comfortable with the way that it works and things you'll see how it works for you um, and you'll want probably want to create more um, individual plans <laughs>